Morning folks, it's about 8 a.m. here. Uh, welcome or welcome back. So the goal for today is going to be to get the plumbing in in the pond for the filters and also get the solar panels mounted on a pole. So let's get going. Well, I learned that building a pond is not something you should do over a series of weekends. It's something you want to bang out in about a week. Wow, there's so many birds. Look at these birds. Holy crap. Very cool. Yeah, so I guess I, uh, I forgot to drill holes in one half of my under gravel filter. So I got here and it had lifted up, so I pulled it out. We're gonna have to put that back in, but not today because I just don't have the time uh, to drain the pond again. So we'll have to do that another time. these two little cedars right here is where I want to put the panels on a pole. Um, see, the cabin actually faces southwest. Uh, so southwest is, is basically along the tree line beside the pond. So the panels themselves will actually face kind of like that. There's my little hole. Um, for perspective, there's the cabin. Um, these trees are gonna kinda hide it from you, not really, but a little bit hide it from view when you're up on the cabin's porch. Um, so these panels aren't gonna be all that heavy. Um, so that's plenty, that's probably too deep. I probably don't even have enough quick greet to fill that, but it'll hold it pretty solid and I can pack the top with clay again. You can look at how much clay is in this soil. Like just look how blue that is. I mean, it's just like, that's the whole reason why I'm not too worried about my liner. It's just like, you're just so much clay here. I got this two and a half inch uh, rigid conduit. Um, this thing is heavy and solid, so it should be a good pull. All right, so there we are. I don't have a level, but there's trees all around it that should be pretty level, and it looks right to my eye. It may not look right on camera, but. Um, and so that tree 
right there is about due south. You like the pond, buddy? She disappeared for like 20 minutes, got a little scared. All right, so I got these uh, new power solar panels, dollar a watt, which is about standard for shipped panels that are small enough to ship UPS. There you go. Okay. I also got these pull mount racks, which I think it'll be easier to build these up down here. So we can do that now. These need to go like this. There you go. The next step is to put these like this so that you can pivot the panel at whatever angle you want. Tighten that down yet. Looks like this thing goes like that. Alright, so that's about it for this. Um, so you can see that can rotate like that, and then you use pair of these zip ties to connect to the pole. Uh, not zip ties, but I don't know what these are called. Um, so we're going to tighten these bolts and do the other one off camera. Alright, so now I've got those all ready to go and when the time comes we can use the wrench and tighten them on. Alright, cool. So we got both of those uh, set up. Those little things are pretty neat. They cost like $39 each. Um, yeah, I can't, at that price, I can't imagine um, the need to even try and make your own you know, I feel like if I go to Home Depot and buy a bunch of stuff, like I'll be in more than $39. Plus, it won't even work as good. So, those are pretty nice. I got them from Northern Arizona Wind and Sun. I will put a link to them and everything else that I use. All right, let's uh, check on this concrete. It's been about two hours. Uh, it's kind of firm, but I want to give it some more time. So, what we can do now is to work on the plumbing for the pump so we can take the plumbing from the skimmer pump over to the eventual mini waterfall site so let's work on that so i got a little spot <laughs> whoa, got a little spot cleared out here dumped some gravel to kind of help level oh these 57s are dirty either that or it's my shoes um so this is this is the skimmer pump is inside it right now and it's gonna sit out like that um there it is i will uh put a link to that as well um so basically this is pretty simple uh water comes in this here is an overflow and i'm going to pipe pump water out um it's going to get hidden it's going to go under the gravel and it's going to come out on that end uh, Eventually, I'm going to cut this and make it a rubber coupling for easy maintenance if I want to pull this whole thing apart. But uh, that can be done anytime, and I don't have the coupling with me, so we'll just go like that. Okay, so this is mocked up kind of sort of how it will go. Kind of goes around there and then up. So I'm going to glue it now. All right, I do have channel locks today. Someone gave me the tip of storing these upside down, which I've been doing, so hopefully that helps too. Helps keep it. Yeah, well, it's still glue. Put it in there. Put it in. Quarter turn. Quarter turn. And that. This stuff evaporates like it's not going to go into the pond. Seriously, don't worry.
people tend to freak out about your PVC connecting skills, but honestly, I have never had this stuff leak, knock on plastic. Okay, so that's basically, I would say, roughed in. Um, back to the pump. That's about as, almost as direct a path as I can get without going through the pond. And I'll probably mess with that end there to get it to come out where I want and flow where I want, but that's, you know, good for now. And so I've got another order of 57s on order, so once we get that, that'll all be covered with gravel and plants and stuff, so none of that's gonna show. It's been about four hours since I did this concrete. I think it's firmed up enough that I can try and bash some of this clay around it without messing it up too much, hopefully. So this is kind of phase one of the solar for this. I'm gonna be having um, more panels, those panels that you see on my house. That's four, um, four panels that add up to about a, uh, 640 watts. And eventually those are gonna come off and be on like a kind of a cabana pool shed roof thing here that are gonna be wired into the same controller. And I'm getting, um, I'm getting some bigger grid die panels for up there, but for now, this is going to run off of 420, 420 watts. So that's going to be like that for maybe a, a month or a, a couple months or a year. And then we'll expand this system and we'll expand that system. Or just to demonstrate that we don't have any shading issues at the moment. Um, this, uh, you can see the two shadows there and you can see the thin strip of light. I did it on two different, um, two different mounts because eventually I want a virtual track, um, which is like, passively tracking the sun basically manually tilting them wherever you want based on the season and the time of day um, i'll get into why i'm doing that more later but for now that's that's the general reason why Let's mount our binding box here all right so Pro tip, no, not pro tip, hack tip. Hack tip, if your zip ties aren't long enough, you can combine them together. All right, so let's, uh, let's hook our negatives up. This is labeled, this one here is our negative. And uh, you can see that it doesn't fit. It's not meant to reach. Um, so what we've got is some MC4 cable and you can buy one piece and cut it in half and use your negative on the negative and the positive on the positive. 
So we're gonna do that. But first, we're gonna make our install kind of clean with these little clips. And you just slide them on like that. You can put them inside the rail or outside. Um, for our purpose, I think, or actually I think what we'll do is we'll go up. Yeah, because it's easier to get around to the combiner box. And so, there you go, see that? Now that just stays in there. You guys can see that. So I said this is our negative. We're gonna connect that. And then we are gonna put a, another clip and then we're gonna come down here. So. And I'm gonna put a little slack in here too. Um, because I may want to move this panel a little bit. So this can get us where we need to go. Cut that off. Let's get you a new camera angle. So we're going to loop this down through our existing zip ties. Alright, so these are PV wire cord grips. And what you can do... There we go. So we got that through there. You can tighten these and it'll cinch the wire. So it's like liquid tight. And we'll strip that and we'll go to our negative bar here. All right, so we got one negative connected. All right, just the other negative off camera, but it basically goes up there um, and then comes down the pole and follows the other negative. Oops, it's tripping. And that just uh, comes right in. So for the positive, we'll just take our other half of the um, MC4 cable that we cut and just clip it in there. And we're going to run this up also. So we'll just snake this through. that so it kind of makes the same loop all right there we go okay all right so we're going to put this uh close to the other one here um it doesn't quite both fit under there but it's all right goes right to the input side of the breaker. I'm going to change the camera so you can see. <laughs> um, and these midnight breakers are directional, so you do need to go in the plus, uh, the direction the power is coming from. Um, and theoretically, with two panels, you could do this with branch connectors, but I'm going to be adding more later, so I don't want to do that. Um, so you wouldn't have to necessarily buy this combiner box, which costs 100 dollars and the breakers are um, sixteen dollars each uh, you could do you could just the NEC allows um, two up to two panels in parallel without um, combiner box or individually breakers on the individual strings All right, so that's connected. That's turned off. So there's no danger. This is uh, this is an open circuit. Um, so there's nothing. Nothing can. These can't catch on fire or anything right now. All right. So we took that last positive up, kind of hit it under there, made a nice big working loop there in case we want to tilt these panels, and then it just comes down and goes into our combiner box to this breaker right here. And yeah, I have mismatched breakers. Uh, it, it's 10 gauge wire. Um, 15 is fine. 10 is fine. The only thing it'll it'll do bad is mess with your OCD. But I ordered the wrong one. All right, we'll just we'll put a couple little zip ties. 
just to make this cleaner. You can always cut them off if you don't want them there, but just kind of keep those bunched together. It's a little cleaner. All right, so this is our combiner box, and it's pretty basic what it does. It combines your panels. Um, so both of our positives go to these breakers, and then you've got your combined positives out here. You just run a wire down out this last knockout that I haven't used to your charge controller. That's your positive, and then your negatives, you just take a wire from this negative bus bar down to your charge controller negative. Um, we're going to do one last thing. We're going to ground these, um, and then we'll be done with what we're going to do today. We'll ground this top panel together if I can do it without dropping this. <laughs> Change of plans. Dropped it. Can't find it. All right, that's on there good, and it bites in. It's supposed to bite in. All right, so we got our ground right there tied in. Comes down the pole, and we'll bring it into the box and tie it in. And we'll do the other one off camera. Both positives, negatives, both grounds are connected. Um, so now we can just put this stuff back on here. Um, so I've got one more spot. So whenever I do those other panels, we'll tie it in right there. That's why I've used this combiner box rather than branch connectors. There it is. And then close that like that. Put the screw here. And don't forget to put your little sticker that says high voltage has the potential in quotation marks to kill you. Um, these are 24 volt panels by the way, I don't know if I've said that. Uh, I'm using a PWM controller and my system's 24 volts, my battery bank is going to be 24 volts so I've got to match my panels to my controller. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed that video. So what's next? Um, well, next video we're going to connect the power plant, the uh, guts of the system, to the solar panels. And then um, hopefully we'll get the pumps tested out uh, if the water level rises high enough. Um, and that'll be kind of the climax of everything until spring. Um, I've got another order of 57s coming, so we'll start to get it filled in. Uh, you'll have to bear with me. I'm a, I'm a weekend warrior YouTuber, so... Um, can only do this every once in a while um, so that that power board there is going to go into a little powerhouse down here um, I've built that on camera but I wanted to pull that out of this video because I know that um, some people really aren't interested in that so that's a longer technical video that I'm going to upload at the same time as this so if you're interested in that um, I would check out that video too I'll put a link above and a link in the description so you can find it um, but that's going to explain more about how this will work, how solar power systems work in general and stuff like that. So, all right. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time. Hey. What you looking at? You ready to go home, buddy? You go home? <laughs>